Hello everyone, this is Casper, and welcome to another Unbracking tutorial. I am now finally back from my vacation, it was very nice. Uh, yeah, I was a week away in England, and uh, I enjoyed it a lot. But now I'm back here in Denmark, and ready to do another tutorial. So, uh, yeah, let's just get started. Uh, I'm thinking that the next tutorial I'll be doing is the um, creating your own contact form tutorial. Um, which will uh, utilize quite a few skills. Of course, we need to build the form, and then we need to, to be able to post. And not only that, but we also want it to be able to post into Umbraco so that we can save each uh, each time someone has posted, we can save the information in, in a node. So that'll be great. So, uh, yeah, let's get started. Um, yeah, let's just open up Visual Studio. Uh, I'll be doing this video in three parts because it's a very long process and I can't ma remember all the details by heart so I have to look it up uh, sometimes because I haven't done a lot of contact forms but uh, those I have done have been quite good uh, yes let's see let's just fire it up just wait a minute yep we know that and there we go and this is of course our page and let's just access the back office a minute. I thought we want that as well. There we go. And it remembers my login. And why? What's wrong with that? Probably this then, wasn't it? Yes, it was. There we go. Okay, so we have the home page. I think we should revert back to, of course, that. Yep, there we go. Right, so let's do a new section. So first we want um, to create a new document type, another master. So we'll just create one that we'll call uh, contact, oh, in English, contact, um, yeah. Uh, let's just call it holder for now, actually, and uh, just create it. And that is just there, that's perfect. Um, it doesn't need anything right now, it's just a placeholder. And of course we have the contact holder, and then we want to create a new one. And this will be a uh, contact page, we'll call it. There we go. Um, Actually, no, we will not call it a con... No, this will actually be the contact page. Sorry for that. Contact page. Contact page. There we go. No, okay, yeah, it can't, of course. So let's just delete that, actually. It doesn't really matter. Delete. There we go. We have the contact page. Reload the nodes. Delete the whole... Oh, sorry. Delete the holder. So we have the contact page here. And then... Underneath, we want a. Uh, also, not there. A um, contact uh, form, for example. It won't be the form, but this is just another uh, a contact formula. There we go. And this needs to have a couple of things, though. It needs to have a email. Uh, actually, just call email from, because it um, this is the person who's sending or writing the uh, or contacting us, and it's from this person. So that will be a text string. Just put under so, you no know, properties for now. Description we'll leave at that. Save it. We'll create a new one. Name. Um, this we'll call. Uh, yeah, just name. No, we want something more than just name. So just. Uh, Contact name. Of course, that will contact name. Uh, save that and oh, put it in the wrong place. Let me just uh, move that down. There we go. And the last one we want to uh, contact and then uh, message. And the reason I'm writing contact in the front is because what if we have other messages like an error message? If we all call the message, then the aliases will be weird and stuff like that. So it's a good idea to more or less specify where in Umbraco your content's going to live. So this is contact stuff. So we just give it the, uh, yeah, 
uh, the, uh, the contact name. Uh, let's put that down again to here. That's basically a very typical uh, thing here. So we have an email, a, f uh, a name, and a message. And of course, the message shouldn't be a text string. It should be a text box multiple. There we go. Um, so that's good to know. And of course, we want to say that a master can create a contact formula. There we go. And a contact formula is allowed to have. Uh, oh, sorry, a contact page. My bad. There we go. Contact page, not a formula. And a page is allowed to have formulas under it. There we go. <coughs> not going away. So now we can go to home page and we can create. Um, ah, sorry, that was master. Again, my bad. Uh, I've been in England for a whole week. I may have uh, just put some things a bit away. Let's see. Home needs to be able to create a contact page and master doesn't need to be able to okay try again create contact page let's call this contact contact us the page title will be contact us um, for a um, for an offer for example we can save and publish it and then that's good. Right. Now here, uh, actually let's just reload it. We can uh, contact us and we can go in and that's good. Of course let's just go into the style sheet a minute. Uh, oh, not style sheet. Template. And make them both inherit from our uh, master page. Um, master, there we go. Right, so of course we reload. It's going to have the stuff we need. And yeah. Good. So now we can go in and start editing some stuff in the page. So let's go, go to a test application, reload, and why isn't it showing up? There we go. Right click and clean project, and we'll start with the page. Right, um, what we need here then is a contact formula. So let's just start by building a normal HTML form. Just form. Then we want an input. Um, oh, there we go. And the type will be equal to. And this will just be email. Uh, I should just make a label as well so we're a bit clear. So label. And this is for. And then we'll give this an ID. ID is equal to. There we go. Um, email from. We'll put that into there. And then here we'll just write. Um, yeah, just write email. Just put a space between those two. <coughs> and then we'll just copy all that again. And then. This won't be email from, but this will be uh, yeah, name from, for example. Just something, and the type won't be email, but it will be text. Right, and then the last bit, put a break, and then we want to put in our oh, this here, label for, and then. Um, write message from and put that into here and then I'd like to do a break tag here as well actually and just take uh, change this to actually we don't need that either just need uh, no yeah we can leave it text area and then the ID of that would be message from there we go just build that a minute and let's see what it looks like probably going to be really ugly, but it's just a, yeah, oh, that is really ugly, let's just put in a bit of styling for that, shall we? Um, of course, here we want to div class to contain a fluid. Oh, control X, thank you. And div class is equal to a container. There we go. 
So now we have a bit of bootstrap in there, so we can just go back and reload it. And our forms here. And of course, there's email all three places. Well done, me. So email, and then name, come on, and message. And of course, like all other forms, we need a submit button. So let's just uh, do it. No, we don't need a break. We'll just do an input. Come on. Input type is equal to submit. And then we'll give it a value equal to uh, submit. This will just be the uh, text inside. Reload, and we have our submit form. Actually, we do need a line break in there, so let's include that very quickly. Um, br. There we go. Right. It's not pretty, but it, it works. I hope. Right. So of course here we could write something blah 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 blah, and we could submit. But of course, the, the, because it's HTML um, that we're using, and when I say that, I mean that I've set this input as type email is expecting to get an email so if it doesn't get that in the form well then something's wrong so we can submit that and it'll submit and yeah just gives us this th um, question mark and nothing happens a quick oh, a quick thing we can do is of course in here we can say well the uh, email although it did tell us but we'll do it anyway is needs to be required we'll just write it equal required you don't have to write required in here, I think it's just a 1 or something like that is good enough, or true is good enough, but I'd just like to write it like this. And we want our name to also be required. Okay, I haven't saved it yet, but if I go back now and try to submit, it will just submit. Then it will tell me to please fill out this field, because we did, uh, okay, when I submit it, it reloaded the page, now it's telling us, oh, please fill out this field, so we'll fill it out, now it's not an email, so we'll fill it out as an email, now it is an email, and I can submit, and everything worked, but we still want the name, and the message, um, yeah, we actually want that as well, otherwise there's no point in us building this form, so, um, we'll put the required into there, of, uh, of course, and into here as well, save that, and reload, there we go, that was one there. Of course, now if I try and submit, it will tell me to fill out this field. My name is Casper. I'll try again. No, nope, please fill out this field. Hello. And we submit, and it submits, but of course nothing happens. So this is the uh, the form, and uh, yeah, that's basically it for now. So this is actually already now the end of part one. Uh, I'm going to be making part two in a minute, and from and in part two we're going to talk about creating the model for this because it's a bit more it's a bit trickier to start putting uh, stuff into Umbraco but it's actually not hard not that hard at all it's, you just have to quickly wrap your head around it so yeah I'll be uh, making that video now so uh, take care and please like and subscribe and also by the way thanks for all the uh, for the comments and the suggestions and uh, stuff like that that I've been started getting from people it's nice to see some activity and it's just nice for me to see some people actually like this and uh, can actually use the information for something that means it's not been in vain so yeah until next video uh, take care